Hi everyone, it's Tom, WA2IVD. Welcome to Ham Cured Smoke and another edition of the IC7300 from A to Z series. We've got quite a bit to cover today, so let's get right to it. Let's take a look at the IP plus function. This is described on page 4-7 in the manual. There's really not a lot to this in terms of using it. There is uh, basically on and off. If you press the function button, you see IP plus here. You press the button to turn it on, and you will see an IP plus up in the display here right next to the filter. And uh, then you can turn it off. There are no other settings for it. And you really are going to notice the effect of this more if there's a really strong signal next to a fairly weak signal. And unfortunately, the band conditions across pretty much all the bands today are uh, lousy. Uh, there's not a very good description of this uh, in the ICOM manual. You can find some other descriptions of uh, IP or the intercept point. This typically refers to the third order intercept point. If you do a Google search on that, you'll find uh, Wikipedia articles and other articles that discuss it. If you read the description of this function in the manual, it's actually one of the better examples of double talk that I've seen. According to ICOM, the IP plus function improves the intermodulation distortion quality by exerting the direct sampling system performance. I have no idea what that means. Uh, essentially what it does is it tailors the gain a little bit of the input amp, as far as I can tell, uh, to make the 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 input preamplifier is a little bit less responsive to really strong signals without reducing the gain to lower uh, to weaker signals and that's about it for that function I'm sorry I don't have a better demonstration of it but as I said you really need to have some really strong signals adjacent to some weak ones to uh, to see what the uh, the actual effects of it are and also the effects of it are more pronounced on 40 and 80 meters and 160 meters, the lower frequencies. Uh, if you look at other radios that have an intercept point optimization or some sort of an IP function on them, most of them tell you that they're primarily effective only on the lower frequency ranges. That's about it for that one. All right, let's take a look at the noise blanker. Of course, the noise blanker is something that's primarily effective on ignition noise and pulse type noises. So if we're going to demonstrate that and play with the settings a little bit, we really need to have some pulse type or ignition type noises. So let's see what we can find. So the noise blanker is primarily effective against ignition noise. So, in order to do some testing with it, we're going to use a source of ignition. And in order to make sure that the radio actually picks it up, I've got a little piece of wire here that I have uh, clipped onto my antenna lead. And I'm going to take it and actually Give it a wrap right around the uh, right around the ignition source. So we'll see how this works. So we're going to leave this out here. Let's go inside and have a look at the radio. Okay, we would appear to have some ignition noise. We can see that it's uh, actually if I go, you see the noise is pretty much across the entire band. In fact, if I put the attenuator in, you can kind of see the little blips from some of the noise, but it's pretty broad. So let's go back to the center. There's some Morse code here. There's also a Ritty contest going on this weekend. So 
And we'll get near a signal here so we can uh, hear it with the noise. Now the noise blanker button is right here. And of course the simplest way to use the noise blanker is to simply turn it on. And of course you can hear what a really good job that it does eliminating the noise. Let's uh, go back and we'll do an A-B test here so you can hear it with the radio volume up. That's most of the way that you're going to be using the noise blanker function. However, like many other functions on the IC7300, the noise blanker does give you some setting options. So if you press and hold, then you get the settings menu for the noise blanker. So you can adjust the level, the depth, and the width. And there is actually a pretty good explanation of this in the manual. The level sets the level where the noise blanker starts to become effective, or the, the signal level that will trigger it. So if I turn this way up, In theory, that should have made it less effective because it's 100% level, although I may have enough noise on here that it's actually not going to matter where it's coming in. So you may not be able to see that. The depth is how deep the blanker, that's what a noise blanker does, is it blanks those pulses by essentially turning the gain of the receiver down to zero very briefly when the pulses occur. If I turn the depth down to zero, you can hear the noise a little more. You don't see anything change on the scope because the scope is showing you what's actually coming in. The noise blanker is past where the scope is. And then the width changes how wide the blanking area is. So if I turn that all the way down, there's virtually no blanking interval, and now you can hear the noise come back. And then it looks like once I get above 20 or you know, just a little above 20, it seems to be a wide enough pulse that it's blanking the noise. I'm sorry I don't have a lot of different types of noise to try this on, but at least we've got one type. And ignition noise is probably the most common noise type that you're going to hear with this. Uh, not really any other signals right nearby that, uh, that I can give you some examples of. Once again, the bands are very bad today as I'm doing this video, so there's not a lot on here. But there you have it. Noise blanker on. Noise blanker off. So, um, in terms of copying CW, it probably doesn't really help that much. Um, but it makes it much more pleasant to listen to. And that's it for the noise blanker. Now let's take a look at the noise reduction function. This is similar to what would be called DSP or digital signal processing noise reduction on some other radios. Of course, since everything on this radio is digital signal processing, they just call it noise reduction. So the NR button is right here, and you can hear the background noise on the radio with uh, with it just operating normally. Thanks for hanging in there. And if I press the noise reduction. DQ Florida QSO party, this is Kilo and NC4, Bravo Italy Tango. You can hear that the noise reduction, or that the background noise is reduced, but the uh, audio still sounds pretty clear. And then if you press and hold the noise reduction button, you can adjust the amount of noise reduction. If we go all the way down. Kilo party, this is Kilo and MT4, Bravo it's Italy Tango. Pretty much off. Now it's up to zero. Uh, the, the default is somewhere in the middle. Kilo party, this is Kilo and MT4, 
four, Bravo, Italy, Tango. And then if we go all the way up, 15 is the maximum. When there's, when there's no signal, hang on here, listen. You kind of hear this sort of digital artifact of uh, what almost sounds like frequency shifting in the background and the static. But even with it set to maximum, you'll notice that uh, when we get a voice here, The, the voice still sounds pretty clear and undistorted, so you can, uh, if you don't like listening to a lot of the static noise in the background, you can turn the noise reduction and crank it up. Uh, it might make it a little harder to pick a really weak signal out of the noise, but if you're just talking with uh, somebody or you're on a net and you want to decrease the background noise, if that uh, is aggravating to you, the noise reduction function is a pretty good option. I've used this uh, feature on some other radios, and if you crank it all the way up like I've done here, uh, the background noise gets very low. You hear the the frequency shifting noise that I pointed out, but with it all the way up on some other rigs, I've found that the voice gets pretty distorted as well, and with the 7300, it doesn't seem to do that. I'm just waiting for the. Just wanted to get one last uh, sample of the voice there. So. All right, 73. Thank you. That's pretty. Pretty much it for noise reduction. Well, we covered a lot of ground today. I hope you found at least a couple of useful tidbits in there. I would love to hear from you. If you have any suggestions, corrections, or anything else, please leave some feedback in the comment section. And as always, thanks for watching. I'm Tom, WA2IVD, and this is Ham Cured Smoke.